Hello there, and welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to do something a little bit different, and we're going to do a molten rock effect that I've used on this guy's weapon. So we're going to use a molten rock mace. This is a cool effect that you can use on all different things, so you could use it on armor, or if you're actually painting an earth elemental itself, this would also be quite an interesting technique to do. So without further ado, if we get cracking straight into the, uh, the effects. So we're going to start off by painting the mace with a Vallejo Dwarf skin. This is a nice thick base orange colour. Uh, this is, uh, this is a, a base tone where we're going to build up from with this one. And the idea with this is we're going to build sort of like a lava effect on the mace first before we build up to get the, uh, the cracked rock effect later on. So ideally we're going to start with our sort of a, a, a good base mid-tone orange here. And dwarf skin seems to do a really good job of that, as you see. What we're going to do then is we're just going to move on and use a bright orange again from Vallejo. You could use a Troll Slayer orange if you're using Citadel instead. It does the same thing, very similar sort of paints. And that's what I'm going to do now is just pick up, uh, not so much some of the edges, but almost like a little camouflage pattern as such, just going to pick out some sort of uh, lightning strike effects and fill the area so that we've got patches of dark orange, patches of light orange. And we're going to build this up, like I say, to be a little bit more sort of uh, like a lava tone. And you see it as we progress. Try not to keep it all in one area, but put it in um, in random areas, random patterns, so that it doesn't look too uniform. It's supposed to be sort of a little bit more natural rather than man-made. So once we've got our highlight sorted here in the orange, we're then going to move on and highlight a bit more with the yellow. And move on to Citadel Avalanche Sunset. And this is one of my favourite go-to yellow base coats. This is a um, very, very good colour for painting yellow on top of because this has quite a good um, coverage rate. I know yellow can normally be a bit of a problem for uh, putting paints on but Avalon Sunset is always a good idea. It's a good starting point. So now that I've put the Avalon Sunset on, as you see I'm going to paint this sort of like lightning ish effects. So just picking smaller areas now for this uh, uh, this aerial yellow from Citadel to sit, just so that it gives a difference in tone. So we've got about three different tones here. We've got two oranges, two yellows. And so when we put our uh, stone effect and our rock effect over the top, hopefully the colours then should show through underneath and give us a interesting sort of lava effect in between the stone underneath. Whether or not it will work is something that we will find out as we progress. So just keep on building those uh, those random patterns and those sort of lightning effects. Uh, just like so. Don't have to be too neat. I mean we just gonna cut the whole thing over anyway, but it's just about building a few different tones like this. So like I say, it's not about making it neat, it's not about building a certain pattern, it's more about covering in splodges to get different tones to give a uh, modern rock effect a different kind of effect. Okay, and as we're moving on, we're going to take the plunge here now. So we're going to use a mixture of a ghrelin earth with a black tone. So you're just going to put a little bit of 50-50 split. You want to make sure that the agrelin earth is nice and thick, but you also want to make sure that it's turned black and that it's not brown anymore. You'll notice that I'm putting quite a thick layer of this mixture on, um, and that's because when you put a thick layer on, it cracks up um, on wider cracks when it dries. If you put a thin layer on, the cracks can sometimes appear so small that you won't get the colour poking through underneath. So I'm making sure to put as much on as, as I need. Um, 
and also to help it along so that I don't have to wait so long. I'm also using a hairdryer to dry it off. So I'm putting a nice big thick coat on and then I've run a hairdryer back and forth across it. Not getting too close to the miniature because of course it's plastic. I don't want to melt the weapon off the plastic. So it's just a case of a little bit of patience, take your time, use the hairdryer in bits and, and just in waves and it should crack. Um, it should crack much much quicker and you should get this kind of lava cracked stone effect here. Now from there you could leave it or you could build further up and for me I wanted to build this up to be more like rock. So for the base first home for the rock we're going to use a citadel ash in grey. I'm going to dry brush this so that it picks up on all of the top areas without touching the recessed areas and without picking up on that lava effect underneath. We're going to try and dry brush this across the whole, um, the whole part of the weapon because this is going to be sort of our base dry brush. And normally with a dry brush I'll say less is more, so build it up in stages. If you've got to put this on twice to get the desired effect, then that's great. Don't go too over the top right from the off, try to do it in stages. So once we've got our base tone, we're then going to move on to our mid tone, which is a Citadel Dawnstone. This is also going to be a dry brush. I'm just going to build this on top of the etching grey. This will dry darker than it looks as well. So Dawnstone is a good mid-tone grey. And although it looks lighter on top of that etching grey, it will tone down quite nicely. Because I am going to add another colour on top. Just here with the Citadel Celestra grey. Now this one is very, very light in comparison to this. So again, take your time very very small light brush effects just to get to the tone and stage that you want that mark. and if you like that's as far as you have to go you don't need to go any further than that once you're at this stage and you've done your three dry brushes this could be enough for your molten rock weapon um, personally i'm going to push it just a little bit further again and i'll show you how to do that as well but again like you see we're just taking our time so for me now, I'm just going to push it a little bit more. So I'm going to add a few blobs here quickly of Citadel Fugan Orange Wash. And this is a very warm, bright orange wash. And where I place that, I'm just going to wet my brush. I'm going to manipulate that wash into some of the other cracks that we've got here. So that the smaller cracks then that aren't showing through the uh, lava effect are going to have a little bit of an orange feel between them. Uh, because we don't want it to dilute just down to grey, we want to keep that warmth, keep that, that, that heat effect coming through. So again, it is a little bit of a combination of wash and water, just sort of like a, a wet brush so that the, the wash moves a little bit um, smoother. And once I've hit that stage, I'm going to just go back to that Celestra grey. I'm just going to hit the edges. It's tough with this because the edges aren't strictly straight, but you can still pick out some of the areas that you want to really, really pop with those highlights. So you can just go along the edges like so. Just using the side of the brush, trying not to have too much paint on the brush so that as I just just drag that brush down, you get a little bit of the paint. Just just sits across the top of the uh, the raised points there, just like that. There you go, nice. Also a bit too much there, it doesn't matter. Like I say, because it's more of a stone than a direct, strict line, it's going to be a little bit more freehand anyway. I'm talking about freehand, I'm going to continue the edge highlighting, but this time I'm not going to use the side of the brush. I'm actually going to go in now and just pick out some of the details on the rocky patches themselves, just like this. Um, again, you don't need to go as far as this, you could keep it with the dry brush, but for me then, just to get that colour to pop, just to get that rock to stand out, I'm just going to pick out some more of those um, detailed areas and get these, these points to pop then. So between the orange, the shade, the greys, then the highlight, this should look really, really good when we're done. And there you have it, as easy as that. A quick and easy way to do molten rock, as you see the tones and colours are really really nice with that um, yeah 
yeah, it, it doesn't need to be anything too extreme or anything too difficult. Take your time, have fun with it. I suppose probably the most difficult thing is the Agrel and Earth. It's trying to make sure that you get the consistency right. And it's as simple as that. Thank you very much for watching, guys, as always. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope it helps you with your painting. Thank you very much.